welcome to T3, day 29 of Honors Precalculus. We're going to continue our fun journey through the world of limits, and this time eventually fold in some trig, which is super fun. I'm going to first show you some cool tricks of how to deal with limits. So as x goes to infinity on this one, what happens? Well, let's just use some logic here. As x goes to infinity, the only terms that are really going to matter in terms of size are the ones with x to the sixth in them. The reason being, x to the sixth, as x gets really, really big, is going to be so much bigger than these. These are going to be so small, like super, super small. And this is going to be super, super small. They will be there, but as x goes to infinity, they're super small. So the only ones that really matter are the leading terms with the highest power. So as x gets big, this is going to end up being close to 12x to the 6th over 15x to the 6th, but those cancel because they're the exact same size, so this limit is actually 12 over 15. This is possible because we've written these in order, so what becomes really small goes away. We don't factor them in. This is for x going to infinity. We use logic. On this one right here, there's only one term with the highest power, which is x to the fourth. This is going to be small, this is small, this is small, this is small. When x gets huge, like x to the fourth is going to be so much bigger than x to the third. So this is going to be approximately the same as the limit as x goes to infinity. You could say x to the third over x to the fourth here, which is just 1 over x. It's about 1 over x. So as x gets huge, this goes super, super big. What does this get to? 1 over super huge is going to go to 0. So what about this one right here? Well, as x goes to infinity, these are the only ones that matter because when x gets huge, 2 to the x gets massive. These are super small. So this is still approximately 2 to the x over 2 to the x. So as x goes to infinity, that's just going to go to 1. Ah, what happens here? This is x goes to negative infinity. Well, what's going to happen here is as x goes to negative infinity, you have like 2 to the negative infinity. What does that mean? Well, that's 1 over 2 to something really big, which is 1 over huge which is zero. So this is gonna to go to zero, and so is this. So this one actually is gonna be five over negative two, because both of those terms go to zero. So you have to be careful. The difference here being x is going to negative infinity. This is one to, that's similar to what we talked about yesterday. The top stays the same, but you should now recognize that this is gonna factor into the square root of x plus five times the square root of x minus five, because x is equal to the square root of x squared. What cancels here? Well, this cancels, leaving you with just 1 over the square root of x plus 5. And now you can plug in 25, so you end up with the square root of 25 plus 5 is 1 over 10. What about this one right here? Whew, you can't plug in 4. What we're going to do here, because it's 0 over 0, is actually multiply by the square root of x plus 5 plus 3 over the square root of x plus 5 plus 3. It's really important that you make it plus on both because that will cancel out the term on top. When you multiply this, this is just a form of 1. So when you multiply this out, you end up with the square root of x plus 5, like this, times the square root of x plus 5, so that goes away. The middle terms cancel, and then you have minus 3 times 3 is 9. The bottom here, you still have the x minus 4, but then you have the square root of x plus 5 plus 3, and this is still the limit as x goes to 4. Well, that top here, this is x minus 4. So what do you cancel? These cancel, leaving you with the limit as x goes to 4 of 1 over the square root of x plus 5 plus 3. Can you plug in 4 now? You do. 4 plus 5 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. So you end up with 3 plus 3 is the square. 3 plus 3 is not 9, 6. Yay. So now let's start thinking about what happens when we mix in trig functions. As theta goes to infinity, what happens to this? Well, sine, as we know, just goes infinitely up and down. So does it approach anything as this gets bigger? It does not. It just keeps on going between negative 1 and 1, touching everything in between. So this does not exist because it oscillates. What about this one right here? Well, this one right here, you can't plug in 0 because it's just 0 over 0. But you can simplify this. Tangent is equal to sine theta over cosine of theta. So this is over sine of theta right there. That's the sine. And this is tangent right there, like that. So this is equal to sine theta over cosine theta, dividing by sine is the same thing as multiplying by 1 over sine theta. This cancels like this, so you're left with 1 over cosine theta, but cosine of 0 is indeed 1, so theta goes to 0, it's just going to be 1 over 1, which is 1. So you can simplify. What about this one right here? As x goes to 0 of sine inverse, oh gosh, what happens here? Well, as x goes to 0, you can plug that in there. So this is just going to be going to sine inverse of 1 half. This means the sine of what is 1 half? 
This is where you need to remember your basic trig. The sine of what is one half? That is pi over six. I also recommend maybe graphing that and seeing what it looks like. It's pretty cool. The vertical line it'll approach is pi over six. So this is a piecewise function with trig. It looks complicated, but what you do is you go from the left and right. We're trying to know what the limit as x goes to zero. So we want to know what's the limit as x goes to zero from the right. So from the right, that's this one right here. So that one right there from the right is just going to be f of, uh, you go to f of, excuse me, you're plugging in zero into this right here. So you plug zero in and you get f of zero in this case is going to be e to the zero minus four, which is one minus four, which is indeed negative three. But what about the limit as x goes to zero from the left? That's this one right here. So you plug zero into there. So you get f of zero this time is going to be zero squared plus two times cosine of zero plus one. So that's going to be zero plus two times one plus one is equal to three. So that's negative three and three. They are different numbers from the left and right. They are different numbers. So we say it does not exist because from the left and right, that's what it, that's what it says when it's going to zero. It's going to a negative three and a positive three. So it does not exist. You could graph these two things and see that if you want. Now we're not going to go through the proof of this. I'm just going to give this to you, but in class, we'll see if we can talk about the proof, but this is really cool. If you graph this out, it's not obvious what happens when theta goes to zero of sine of theta over theta, but I'm just going to tell you it equals one. We can play with it in class, but that's a cool fact you just get to use. You don't have to prove it. You can just say that the limit as theta goes to zero of sine of theta over theta is one. You're just going to let it be one. That's fine. So how does that help us? Well, this one, it looks like it's different here, but it's the same thing on the top and bottom. It's the same thing on the top and bottom. So what you could just say if you really wanted to, and this is theta right here, is you could say like w is equal to five theta if you wanted to. So what's the limit right here as, as sine goes to w, sine of w over w, but theta right here is equal to w over five right here. So you could say that w over five goes to zero, but it's still going to zero. It's still going to zero. So the same thing right here is still going to be, it's still going to be one. As it goes to zero, it's still going to be one. That five doesn't change it. It changes the speed, but it's not gonna change what it goes to. What about this one right here? Well, this one right here, you need the same thing here, sorry, to use the identity we had above, you need the same thing here and here, which we don't have. So what we'll do is we'll multiply by a over a, which is just a form of one. So if we do that, we end up with the limit as theta goes to zero of a sine of a theta over a theta. This a can go to the front, so you end up with a times the limit as theta goes to zero of sine of a theta over a theta. Now we actually have the same thing here and here. So we know that this right here is gonna be one. So this is a times one, which is a. We had to add that in, so therefore there's an a right there. So what about on something like this? Ooh, gosh, what do we do here? Well, we have to make sure we construct the same thing. Or maybe, who know, you know, it's tough because if we turn this into this, it doesn't mean the same thing is gonna be on the top and bottom. So we're gonna do a really cool algebraic thing here. We're gonna multiply the top by three X over three X and the bottom by five X over five X. These are both forms of one. This is one, sorry, I need a highlighter. I gotta change that better. This is a form of one and this is a form of one. So we're multiplying by a form of one. So what does it turn the top into? Sign of three X times three X over three X. And then what does the bottom turn into? Five X sine of five X all over 5x. But what do we know that this is right here? Well, that's equal to as x goes to zero, the limit as x goes to, this is equal to one, and this is equal to one. So what are you left with? 3x over 5x. X is cancel, you end up with three over five. It's pretty cool when you can use that identity. So what about this one? This one looks challenging. It's actually not that bad because when you do some simplification on this, this cancels right there, and this cancels and makes it x to the three. So you end up with limit as x goes to zero of two times sine cubed of x over six times x cubed. And you're like, what is this gonna be? What is this gonna be? Oh boy, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna factor out the two over six because I can right there. I'm gonna just take that out. So that turns into one third 
the limit as x goes to 0 of sine of cube, sine cubed x over x cubed. Oh, but here's the thing. This is just 1 over 3 times the limit as x goes to 0. They're not the same thing right here. They're not the same thing, but this is equal to sine of x cubed over x cubed, which you can write as the 1 third is still there. X is still going to 0, but this is just sine of x over x, all of it cubed. You're allowed to do that. That is algebraically OK. But what do we know this is right here? When you go to 0, it's 1. So this is 1 over 3 times 1 cubed. So it's just 1 over 3. This is a super cool maneuver, and it just takes practice to see these things.